Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to start talking about rational functions, how to graph them, and how to find the domain and the range. Now, what is a rational function? A function, a rational function is a function in the form of f of x divided by g of x. Basically, it's a fraction where the numerator and the denominator both are functions of x. As an example, y equals 4x plus 3 divided by x minus 1 is what we call a rational function. So, how do we go ahead and try to graph that? Well, typically, with rational functions, there will be asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, and potentially also horizontal asymptotes. And so those are places where the graph cannot cross, and we need to be aware of those, we need to find those. We can do that by following the following steps. First of all, we look for the denominator, and we want to find all the vertical asymptotes by finding the values of x that will make the denominator zero. In our example here, when x equals one, 1 minus 1 is 0, that would make the denominator 0. We can't have 0 denominators, or we can't have 0 as a denominator, and so therefore that would give us a what we call an undefined value for y. That means when we graph our function, and let me go ahead and start that graph right here, there's our y-axis, here's our x-axis, so y and x, so when x equals 1, so there it is, x equals 1, we can draw a dashed line like that. That dashed line is the line x equals 1. And we know that the function will not cross that line because at that point, y will be undefined. Now that we've found that, let's now go to point number 2, or step number 2. Consider the ratio of the numerator divided by the denominator. What happens when x goes to infinity or when x goes to negative infinity? Well, usually something happens that means that the function will... Uh, zero in on a particular value and that's where we'll have another asymptote. So what we can do here is do the following trick. So we're going to take our example y is equal to 4x plus 3 divided by x minus 1 and we look for the x with the highest um, exponent. Now in this case this is x to the first power, x to the first power. So what we're going to do now is multiply both the numerator and denominator by 1 over x like this. So we haven't essentially changed the function because this is equal to 1, so we're multiplying by 1, we don't change the function, but it now gives us a different format of the same function. Now we have y is equal to 4x divided by x is simply 4, plus 3 divided by x is 3 over x, that's now our new numerator, and here we can say x divided by x is 1, minus 1 divided by, 1 divided by x is 1 over x. It's still the same function, but now written in a different format. Now we're going to find the limit. What happens when x goes to infinity or when x goes to minus infinity? So let's take a look. We're going to find the limit of the function, the limit, as x approaches infinity. And what of this particular function, 4 plus 3 over x divided by 1 minus 1 over x. When we do that, when we let x go to infinity, then we get this is equal to 4 plus 3 divided by infinity, divided by 1 minus 1 over infinity. And of course, whenever you divide the number by infinity, you simply get 0. So this becomes 4 plus 0 divided by 1 minus 0, or simply 4 divided by 1, or 4. That means, as x becomes larger and larger and larger, the function gets closer and closer and closer to 4. Now, if you plug in a negative value for uh, x, a negative infinity, so we have 4 plus 3 divided by negative infin infinity and 1 and 1 minus 1 over negative infinity, the very same thing will happen. Both of these fractions will again go to 0. It doesn't matter if we're adding or subtracting 0, so we get the exact same value, which means when, when x goes to infinity, y goes, gets closer and closer to 4. So what we're going to draw here is we're going to draw a second line. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, where y is equal to 4. And we know that as the function, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the graph will get closer and closer to this particular line, both when x approaches negative infinity and when x approaches positive infinity. So this is the line y equals 4. So now what we see here is we have divided the xy plane into four quadrants offset from the origin, and we know that when we graph the function, we cannot cross these lines. Those lines will not be crossed when we try to graph it. Now the question is, where is the graph of this function? Well, to do that, we may try some test points on either side of the vertical asymptotes. 
So let's plug in x equals 0 and see what we get. Let's plug in x equals 2 and see what we get because this point right here is x equal 1. And from that, we should be able to figure out what the graph looks like. All right, let's try that. So our original function, so now we're going to find y when x is equal to 0 is equal to, well, that would be 3 over negative 1, which is negative 3. So we know when x equals 0, y is equal to negative 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, right here. Okay, now that we know that the graph must pass to this point, and it's limited by these two lines right here, the only possibility is if we graph the line like this. We know that it can never cross this vertical asymptote, so it'll get closer and closer and closer to the asymptote, but never touch it. And over here, it'll get closer and closer to y equals 4, but never reach that line. And so the graph will just continue on forever, getting closer, but never touch it. That's one part of the graph. Now, how do we find the other part of the graph? Well, let's find an x on the other side of that asymptote. Let's try y when x is equal to 2. So that would be equal to 4 times 2 plus 3 divided by 2 minus 1, which is 8 plus 3, which is 11, divided by 1, which is equal to 11. So when x equals 2, y equals 11. So here's x equals 2, y is equal to 11, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right up here somewhere. So here we can see that the graph goes, past, goes through this point, but is hemmed in by those two lines as well, which means that the graph must look like this on one side, and like that on the other side. It'll reach the asymptote, but never quite get there. It'll get closer and closer and closer to the asymptote, but never quite reach it. I should say it never quite reaches the asymptote. That is the shape of that graph. That's the only possibility, because we know that if it's to the left of the vertical asymptote, it has to be here. If it's to the right of the vertical asymptote, it has to be there, and it can never cross this horizontal line. And that's how we find the graph of a rational function.